So one of the things I've always loved doing when it comes to retouching portraits is dodging and burning, where we lighten and darken parts of the picture to create much more depth and dimension and ultimately bring a portrait to life. Now, up until recently, I would only do this in Photoshop using a gray layer, a blend mode, and the dodge and burn tools. But now I do this all in Lightroom, which I think gives so much control and I think really makes a portrait pop. And that's what I want to show you in this video. Now, I'm going to be using the masking section. And for the first part of this dodge and burn technique, what I'm going to do is click to create a new mask and I'm going to choose a brush. I'll double click where the name is of this mask at the moment. It's called just mask one. If I double click on that, I'll name this one dodge because this is the first thing that we're going to do. Now, when I've got that, we've got the brush over on the right hand side here. Ordinarily, we'd only just see where it says the size of the brush. But if I tap on this down arrow here, we can see the brush setting. So the feather is definitely going to be at 100. The flow ordinarily by default would be at 100, but I'm going to bring that down to around about 20%. And then we're going to come to the light section and I'm going to increase the exposure by about one stop. All right. So something about there. Now, the way this works is whenever I'm using this dodge brush now, whenever I brush with it, it's only going to apply 20% of the exposure. So as I brush over, that's applied 20%. But if I don't release and I just keep brushing over it, it keeps applying a 20% more. And you'll notice, look, as I keep brushing and keep brushing, this stroke here is getting brighter and brighter and brighter. All right. So this is how we're going to use the dodge tool now. We can have a lot of control over it by applying strokes of, you know, to sort of brighten up the area as much as we want without one single stroke being the full strength, if that makes sense. So let me just come out of here. So we'll start that again. We'll go to create a new brush. Whoops, click to create a new brush, a new mask rather. Click on brush, double click where it says mask one, and we'll go for dodge. And the settings we've got, there we go. We've got the feather 100, flow at 20, and I'll take the exposure up to one stop. About there. I'll now zoom in. Let's just go for uh, 200%. And use the space bar to click and drag where I want to be. And all I'm going to do now then with this dodge tool is literally just very quickly show you how I would enhance brighter highlight areas on the image. So obvious areas, first of all, just over the eyes just here. I laid one stroke over there. And I'll just quickly work around the eyes just on these highlight areas. And the great thing about this is when we're using this, we can use those left and right square bracket keys to control the size of the brush that we're using when we can get in all these tight areas. So I'll very quickly go around some of these areas here. I'll have a highlight on the nose. Again, every time I kind of brush over the same stroke, it adds another 20% to it to make it brighter and brighter and brighter. Got a lot of control over this. Let's add a bit of a highlight on the cheek. And definitely this area here, we've got this triangular pattern of light under his right eye, this Rembrandt uh, lighting pattern. Let's just enhance that a little bit by adding just a couple of strokes over it. Now, you're probably not even seeing what I'm doing here at the moment, and that's the danger when we're doing dodging and burning. You can go too far very, very quickly without realising it. So this is something that you would obviously take your time doing. But the great thing about this technique is that it gives you so much control, and I'll show you why that is in a moment. But it's, I think, way more control with this method than with the method I would use before, which was in Photoshop using the gray, you know, the gray layer, the blend mode, and the dodge and burn tools. So let me just brush a little bit onto here. Tell you what, let me just zoom out to fit, and I'll just turn this dodge layer, this dodge mask off and on. Let's just press down and on. There you go, before and after, before and after. Right, let's just go to 100%. I'll add a bit of a highlight on his forehead here just to kind of shape the light. So circular kind of brush strokes around his forehead just there. And a little bit of highlight on the beard maybe, somewhere like that. Yeah, that's probably as much as I'd want to do. See, I'll obviously take a lot longer doing this, but just to give you an idea of what happens. But let's just turn that off and on, off and on. 
Now, the great thing is here, like I said, the flexibility you have with this, with this exposure slider, it's not set in stone what you put in here, the one stop. I can increase it or decrease it. So you can see if you go too far with it, how you can very easily bring it down just with that slider. So, so much control with this. Absolutely love it. In fact, I know there's one area that I need to work on. It's just space bar, click and drag onto his hands here because this hand here looks just a little bit flat, a little bit low contrast. We can change that a little bit by using a bit of dodging and burning. So I'll use this dodge tool, brush over where we've got that bit there, bit in the middle, and this bit on this side just here. Let's just turn that off and on. Okay, let's go to fit, and then we'll turn that off and on off and on. Maybe that's a little bit too much. So I can dial that down just a touch. This really is one of those things that you've got to be careful that you don't go too far with it. But like I said, you know, you've got the control here. So now that we've done the dodging, now let's do the burning because wherever we add an enhancement to the highlight, either side of that, we want to kind of darken down just a little bit with the burn tool. And by doing that, having this shadow, highlight, shadow, it creates much more of a, an illusion of shape and it exaggerates that so it gives the pitch much more depth dimension and contour so for this then i'll go back to the masking section i'll click to create a new mask again i'm going to use a brush i'll double click on the name of it and this one i'm going to call burn and again looking at the brush settings here the size leave that as it is you've got the feather is definitely at 100 percent the flow there you go down at 20 the exposure, rather than going plus one stop, I'm going to take it down pretty much to one stop to start with. But like, as I've said already, you're not stuck at this setting. It's very, very flexible that you can change it afterwards. Okay, let's zoom in to 200. Space bar, click and drag. And then wherever I kind of added a highlight with the dodge tool, either side of that, I'll just brush down with the burn tool either side like that. In fact, this area here, just let's darken that. Just that little bit where that light has just caught the side of the nose there. And these obvious shadow areas, all I'm going to be doing here is just enhancing them. That's all I'm doing, just enhancing the shadows. The nose, around the shape of the nose just a little bit there as well. Darken down the eyebrows, just a touch. I'll go back to 100%. I had a highlight on the forehead there, didn't I? So if I go off and on, to exaggerate the shape a little bit more now here, I'll just add a brush stroke with the burn tool on the top of the head and then down the side of his face just there. Let's just burn the ear down a little bit, take some of the highlight out of that and dodge and burn on the beard like this. There we go. Alrighty, so look, before and after. Uh, actually the eyes, this is what I love to do with this now. Let's just zoom into 200% on the eyes. And I'm going to decrease the size of the brush. And I'm just going to brush around the iris. Obviously, every time I go over the same brush stroke, it adds another 20 and another 20 and so on. So it gets darker and darker. But I can use this to just add a bit more of an outline to the iris to make them stand out even more. So what we did already with the clarity, the texture, the sharpening, and that little bit of exposure on the eyes, this now is like a finishing touch and really make the eyes pop. Let's just darken down where we've got the eyelashes, where the iris and the eyelid meet as well. Just that little bit of shadow area in there. Just burn that down just a touch. And on the other eye as well. Alrighty. Okay. Oh, there was the hands. Let's go to 100%. Spacebar, click and drag. And then where we've got these highlights here that have been exaggerated on the hand, either side of those, let's just do a little bit of burning with this burn brush. So stroke there, stroke there, there and one there, and one there, and one there. So now look, if I turn that off, turn both the highlights and the shadows off on that, uh, the dodge and the burn off that and that hand there, if I turn them back on, now you can see the difference that makes. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go to fit. All right. So let's just have a look then. Uh, let's just turn all the masks off actually. So keep an eye on the face, if I just turn the masks off here, at the very top of the masking section, we've got this eye. If I press down and hold on that, it'll turn it all off. So though, there's before and after, before and after. Absolutely brilliant. 
Now, like I said, when we're using this dodge and burning here, we have so much control. You can actually, when I hover over them, yeah, you can see where the overlay is showing where we've worked. So much control with this because you can then dive in and play around with the settings here in real time if you think you've either need a bit, a bit more or a bit less. Now, I cover this in a lot more detail and a whole lot more content in a mini course I'm putting together for this portrait that I called the editor. Years ago, this had to be done in Photoshop. But in the course, I go through how everything, even down to making the cigar look as if it's glowing, has been done just using Lightroom. Now, if you want to keep up to date about that and also have access to subscriber-only content, just join my free twice-monthly photography, Photoshop, and Lightroom newsletter. The link for that I've added into the description of this video. But that's all from me, so thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.